the bear who stole the Chinook. Chapter 1. Waiting for the Chinook. One year long ago, the Siksika Indians faced the longest winter that ever brought known. The freezing north wind brought sleet and hail. The trips from snow buried their homes. The people waited for the Chinook wind to blow over the mountains. The Chinook would warm the air and melt the snow. Early in the morning and late in the afternoon, the elders gathered to search the sky. Every day, we see only heavy gray clouds, said one of the elders. The Chinook lifts the clouds up like an arch. Where's the arch? Where's the Chinook? The north wind has created many hardships for us throughout his, this long winter, says another. The blizzards force us to stay in our homes, but our homes are cold because we have no wood to burn. Our children are hungry, and our hunters can find no game, said a third. As the elders stood gazing at the sky, a boy walked past them. This boy has no family and clothes. With racket. He shared the lot of another family, which was very crowded. For this reason, the boy spent a lot of time outside. His friends were the animals he shared his food with. The boy met his friends, coyote, owl, magpie, and weasel in a clearing forest. They all agreed the long winter has brought them much suffering. Where can the Chinook be, says coyote? Magpie, see if you can find out what the chatter is, said Owl. Magpie flew off, gathered the gossip, and soon returned to the news. Bear stole the Chinook, said Magpie to Switch. He wanted to stay warm all winter in his mountain home. That's terrible news, said Coyote. Everyone is afraid of bears, said Owl, so he thinks he could do whatever he wants. We must rescue the Chinook, said a boy. Or this winter will never end. Chapter 2. A Rescue Attempt The French began a long journey to the bear's mountain den. Magpie, you lead the way, said Weasel. Owl and I will catch food for all of us. When night fell, the coyote said to the boy, Curl up to me, or you will be frozen by morning. Four days later, the friends reached bear's den. Owl. You hunt at night, and your dark eyes are very good at seeing in the dark, said the boy. Why don't you look through the, that hole in the den wall and see what you can see? As Owl peered into the bear's den, firelight flashed out his big around eyes. Bear could see the flash of fire and jumped up. Owl could see nothing but the huge bear in front of him, growling furiously. Owl jumped back. He didn't want to hear give himself away a brave attempt now said weasel but perhaps my speed is what we need weasel peered through the den then ran as fast as he could all bear could see was a flash of white fur that looked like snow what did you see said the boy the chinook is tied up at the back back of where's den in the elk skin back said Weasel. I have a plan, said the boy. I always carry with me some sweet grass and sage that I can burn to make smoke. The smoke will put Bear to sleep. As the sweet smoke filled the den, Bear grew sleepier and sleepier until finally he was fast asleep. Coyote, you are very quick. Why don't you creep into the den and grab the elk skin bag, said Magpie. In no time at all, Coyote came out carrying the bag in his strong jaws, freeing the Chinook. I have the bag, said Coyote, but Bear has tied very tightly. It would not be easy to free the Chinook. You and Weasel have the strongest jaws, said the boy. If you each grab hold of the bag and pull as hard as you can, you may be able to tear the bag open. Coyote and Weasel tried, but the elk skin was too strong. Next, Owl and Magpie took turns trying to peek holes in the back, but with no success. Then the boy tried to untie the back, but his fingers were too clumsy. They were all out of ideas. Just then, a timid Pyrie Chicken approached the group. I don't mean to interfere, said Pyrie Chicken, but I may be able to help. 
I think I can unpick this jujitsu with my short beak. The friends agreed, and they each held their breaths while Pyari Chicken worked at the unpicking stitches. Finally, the stitches came undone and the bag was opened. With a mighty whooshing sound, the Chinook escaped. Prairie Chicken stepped back, feeling awkward that she had succeeded where the others failed. But the animals are gathered around to congratulate her. I think I speak for everyone when I say thank you for helping us free the Chinooks. And now Bear was furious when I, he found it that the Chinook was gone. Now I will be never able to keep my den warm in the winter, he said. I might as well sleep through until spring, and from then on, that's what he did. As the Chinook blew down the mountains, the heavy blanket of snow that covered the land began to melt. The sky above cleared, forming a great arch of blue sky. The elders know that their long wait was over, and the Chinook wind was on his way. The boy and his animal friends made their way back down the mountains with the warm wind at their backs. They each planned what they would do next. There will be plenty of mice for me, said to catch. Now that the snow is melting, said Owl. Not if I catch them first, said Weasel. I am quite fond of mice myself, said Coyote. I can't wait to tell the story of our adventures, said Magpie. Won't you all come with me first, said the boy. I would like to introduce you to my people. When the boy arrived back home, everyone was celebrating. We can thank you enough for what you've done, said one of the elders. I have plenty of help and cooperation from my friends, said the boy.